This episode is brought to you by our friends at Hover, the easiest way to buy domain names and do more with them. Get 10% off today by visiting hover.com slash Mr. Mobile. Hi, I'm Jay Goldman, and you are watching Mr. Mobile on Butterscotch.com. Now, we're going to take a look at something that's becoming a bit of an interesting space here. There's some phone manufacturers out there, Sony Ericsson among them, who are really starting to push the unlocked GSM phone market. Instead of going to your carrier and buying a phone under a contract that's going to tie you and your firstborn children and all that kind of stuff to a lengthy agreement that you maybe don't want to be in, there's an emerging market that's starting to appear in unlocked GSM phones that you can buy directly from the manufacturer. And Sony is kind of leading this charge with a line of phones that they've been coming out with, the most recent of which is the iNo, and that's what we're going to be taking a look at today. Now this is the actual phone right here. It's a nice sleek little unit. It's got some great feel to it. It's got that uh, sort of nice touch on the back that we've been seeing more and more on devices. I really kind of like that. It's a touch screen device, so you've got a nice big screen here. It's also a slider, and we'll talk about that in a moment. The back here, we've got an 8.1 megapixel camera with flash. It's a pretty decent camera. It's probably not going to replace your dedicated camera if you're into photography, but if you just want to take some random shots of stuff around you, it's actually pretty good. Uh, one of the nice things about this, underneath this panel at the back here, we've got a replaceable battery, we've got a micro SD SIM card slot, and they didn't put it under the battery. So it seems like they may actually be learning. You can pop the back off here, replace the micro SD card without having to take the battery out, which is great if you're storing stuff on different cards. Unfortunately, it seems like they didn't learn in that we've got one port on the phone here on the side, and it is a proprietary accessory port, which means that you're going to have to use only Sony accessories in that port. And you can see here, this is the USB cable that comes with the phone, and it's got this proprietary dongle on the top, and we can plug it in here, and, uh, you know, so there you go. Now, that also means that if you want to plug your headphones directly into the phone, you're going to have to use headphones that have that attachment on it. This would be a horrible thing, and in fact would, for me anyway, rule out the phone entirely. And I would say, manufacturers, stop doing this. Use the open standards that we have for ports like micro USB. However, in this case, this little thing right here that's part of the package and comes on the charging dock is a little Bluetooth clip. You can pop it on your shirt and it's got a spot on the top for a normal headphone jack. So, this connects to the phone over Bluetooth. They're already paired when they come out of the box. And I can play my uh, music from here. There's some buttons on the side here for playing, fast forwarding, rewinding, and that sort of thing. I can also answer phone calls. There's an answer button right here. And I can plug in my uh, normal headphones in. It does include a pair of normal size uh, jacked headphones in the box. And you can plug those directly into the little Bluetooth device. You can also, of course, use your own headphones as you would with any other device. The phone also includes an FM receiver. You do need to actually have a headset connected to the phone in order to use that because it actually uses the cord as an antenna. And I don't believe that works with the Bluetooth set. So if you're going to use that, you probably do need to look into a pair of headphones that will plug into the proprietary port. No actual GPS in here, but it does have a GPS or assisted GPS, which is based on your car carrier informing the phone of where it is. So that'll work as long as your carrier supports a GPS, and you can obviously use that with mapping and all of those applications. We have Wi-Fi in here, so you can join Wi-Fi networks and surf the web and access data. Also, obviously, has Bluetooth because it works with the Bluetooth uh, accessory that comes with it. And you can pair it with all other Bluetooth headsets. So if you already have one, you don't need to use the little piece. As I mentioned earlier, this is a slider and a touchscreen. It's got a really nice action on that. Some of the phones we've been seeing lately don't have as nice and smooth an action on this, so it feels really good, easy to pop it open with your thumb. I will say it's a little weird, the interaction between the touchscreen and the uh, slider portion, which we'll get to in a moment. This is also, obviously, as we've already seen, has a charging base on it. This is actually really nice. The phone just pops right onto the charging base, and you can sort of leave it on your you know, desk or your bedside table. You can also take this with you if you're, say, going on an airplane and you want to watch some videos, so it holds it at a nice viewing angle for you. You can also open up the slider while you're doing this, because you do need sometimes to have access to these uh, controls in order to control what's happening on the screen, which we'll talk about in a moment as well. The base can plug it directly into the wall and charge over USB or it can plug into your computer and allow you to charge and sync at the same time. So if you're syncing and you want to be able to leave this on your desk, it works perfectly for that. And it also has a spot on it for the earpiece accessory, which can pop on here and charge the battery for that as well. So this is actually very handy, and I was quite impressed with it. Looks great when it's on there. Now, the touchscreen interaction with the keypad is, as I mentioned, a little strange. And that's because when this is open, the touchscreen is actually disabled. 
you would want to have it acting as a touch screen the whole time because sometimes you get into a menu and you want to just tap directly on the thing in the menu that you'd like to access. You might especially feel that way if you're coming from something like an Android or iPhone or Blackberry Storm where you're used to interacting with things on the screen. You're going to have to use the keypad down here in order to do that. Also, in some cases, you actually are interacting directly with the touch screen in touch screen mode and you want to be able to access a function, but you need to actually open the keypad in order to do that. So it feels a little bit like they haven't worked through all of the issues associated with having a touch screen and non touch screen device in the same actual device. I think it's a pretty good start though. Phone comes with a pretty standard array of software for a non-smartphone type of phone. So you get an organizer, you can store your contacts, it's got a couple of games in it, it's obviously got the camera, plays music, video, all that kind of stuff. One of the big features that Sony announced in this phone, and we're going to see it coming in more and more Sony Ericsson phones, is actually PS3 connectivity. So that's right, if you have a PlayStation 3 at home, you can use something called Remote Play to access your media files on your PlayStation 3 from this device. Essentially, you connect the two devices together and pair them, and that allows your phone to access the audio and video files that are on your PlayStation 3 at home and watch them remotely over the network. The big question everybody had was, is this the PSP replacement? And unfortunately right now the answer is no. This doesn't support games yet, so it will play video and audio from your PlayStation 3, but you can't play your games yet. Hopefully that's something that Sony addresses in a future revision. Maybe not in this actual device, but in one of their upcoming ones. The nice thing is you can actually turn the PlayStation 3 on and off from here, so if you forgot to leave it on when you went out, it's not a problem, it'll actually turn it on for you. I will say though, that you're going to need to configure your network at home to allow connections from the phone to the PlayStation 3. So if you're running on, say, a wireless network at home that has any kind of firewall in it, you're going to have to make some firewall adjustments to allow connections between the phone and the, and the PlayStation. Sony doesn't provide a lot of information on that because it's different depending on who makes your network and how you have to configure it and that kind of thing. You can probably find some information online just doing a simple Google search but it's not for the technically faint of heart, so this may not be the solution that just allows you to plug and play. You may need to do a little bit on your own. The web browser in here is actually pretty decent for a non-smartphone. It shows you a phone version of Pages, so it's kind of reorganized a little bit. It kind of reminded me of surfing Pages back in the WAP days, but much better on here. Uh, you're obviously not going to be able to play Flash and things like that, but it's actually a pretty decent browser, and uh, you can browse most pages at least well enough to pull information off of them. I wouldn't say this is a replacement for your BlackBerry or your iPhone. If so, if you're sort of coming from the smartphone side of the market, it's probably not the right device for you. I really like this phone, actually. I have to say, it feels a little clunky in some places. Sony has really crammed this thing full of features, so it does all kinds of stuff in here. It's FM radio, you can take video, it actually does HD resolution uh, photos, so there's all kinds of stuff that's in here, and that feels a little awkward from time to time as you're going between the different menus. That said, this is a really good phone, and if you're the kind of person who's adverse to contracts and wants to own your own hardware, this is actually a really good deal. You pay anywhere from about $450 to about $500 for the phone, depending on where you buy it from. And although if you were to go under contract, you could get a much more feature-rich smartphone for the same price, you would, of course, have signed your life away to a carrier. So, as I said, if you're the kind of person who's adverse to contracts and do want to own your own hardware, I would definitely recommend taking a look at this. It's a great solution. I'm Jay Goldman. This has been Mr. Mobile on Butterscotch.com. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you next time. This episode is brought to you by our friends at Hover, the easiest way to buy domain names and do more with them. Get 10% off today by visiting Hover.com slash Mr. Mobile.